Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty textured circle macrame wall hanging and it's a great project to use up all your scrap cords as well. So I hope you enjoy it. So for this I'm going to be using this 3mm 3 ply macrame cord as well as this white macrame cord with gold flecks in it and this single twist natural cord and I'll have these all linked in the description down below if you're interested. So these are the three colours that I'm going to be using today but you could use any colours you like. So I have eight lots of 240 centimetre lengths of cord, one lot of 620 centimetre lengths of cord and I have a whole bunch of scrap cords. So these are approximately about 74 cords that are about 10 to 14 centimetres long, but it's entirely up to you how long the pieces you use are. Now I have one 30 centimetre hoop. This is just a metal gold one, but I have the metal hoop linked down in the description box. And you could also use a smaller hoop if you want. You would just have to adjust all your cords accordingly. You'll need a tape measure, some scissors, a comb, and that's everything. So let's get started. So first off I'm just grabbing my hoop and I'm grabbing my eight lots of 240 centimeter lengths and I'm grabbing one and I'm just splitting it in half and then I'm taking this midway point and I'm going to be creating a lark's head knot. So we're taking the midway point over the hoop like this and then it comes from behind and then you can just put these two cords here through the loop there. And then just pull that through and pull it to tighten it to the top of your hoop. And then just repeat this with the seven other cords. So now that they're all attached to your hoop, it's time to start making rows and rows of square knots so we can add in the texture. So I'm just splitting this and grabbing four cords at once, the four on the left. I'm grabbing the cord on the right, the fourth cord, and I'm just taking it over all the cords. I'm taking this first cord, the one on the left, and I'm bringing it over that one. Behind the middle two. And then it's going to come up from behind and through this loop here. And I'm just going to pull that so there's about a two and a half centimetre gap at the top. And then I'm taking this cord on the left over the middle two and behind the fourth cord. The fourth will go in front of that one. Behind the middle two. And then it will come up from behind through this loop here. And then you can just pull that to meet the other half of the square knot and that's one square knot complete. So now to attach our scrap cord, we're going to be going underneath this second cord here. So just pushing it underneath that cord so that it sticks out on either side. And then I'm just gonna pull the part on the right down to the middle like this and then I'm taking this one on the left and I'm bringing it over that one. And then we're going to do the exact same. So we're going to go from the right and go underneath the third cord here and then come out in the middle again to meet the other half. So that is how you attach all the tassels. So now we can fold the two middle cords from the square knot here. And we're just going to slide everything up to the top just like that and then you can tighten the square knot if needed. And that's how we're gonna make the textured part. So it has these really pretty loops on either side and then obviously you have the tassel in the middle so it creates a lot of texture. So I'm just going to repeat this with the other three groups in this row. So making that square knot, leaving about a two to two and a half centimeter gap and then pushing the scrap cord underneath the second cord and then bringing it over and taking it underneath the third and then just sliding it up to the top and tightening it. So now that we've got one row complete, I find it easier to flip all the tassels up so you can see what you're doing. 
We're going to take the two chords from either side out of the way for now because we're going to create an alternating row of square knots. So with this row you can only create three square knots. So I'm just going to do that and attach the tassel in the exact same way as before. So now that that second row is done, we can then bring in the two end chords again and we're going to create a row of four square knots for this one. So we're just going to continue on doing this pattern. But you can see we've still got all these loops poking through and they look really pretty. So now as I'm getting nearer to the bottom, I always notice that the second chords in from the end seem to have a lot of length added to them. So what I'd like to do is I just like to swap them around with the chord on the end. So the chord on the end then becomes the second chord and the chord with all the length then becomes the outer chord. So that way you utilise all that length on that chord and you won't run out of length. And then I'm just carrying on as normal and I'm repeating that on the other side. So now that I have done all of my square knots until I've got to the bottom of the hoop, here we can now attach it to the hoop. So I'm taking this first chord on the right, I like to work from the right to the left, I don't really know why. So I'm bringing it up over the hoop like this, and then it's going to come down to the right, like this. And I'm just going to pull that tight and then I'm bringing it up over again and it'll come behind the hoop and through this loop here. And now I'm just pulling everything tight so the knot sits as flush to the hoop as it can. So I'm just repeating that going one chord at a time now. Taking the second chord, bringing it up over and through this loop and then I'm repeating that on the same chord so up over behind and through the loop so this is how we're going to attach all of the chords in this exact way so you're basically creating a double clove hitch knot onto your hoop so now that they're all attached nice and secure we can just trim off a lot of the length now this is entirely up to you you can leave it as long as you want I'm just trimming off the majority of my length and I'm also keeping my scrap cords obviously for all my scrap cord projects which I have a playlist on my channel for if you want to look through. Now from behind I normally notice that a few of the loops from the square knots poke through from behind so this is optional as well but I like to just poke them through to the front so I have maximum texture and maximum loops at the front and it's kind of satisfying as well. Okay, so now that everything is complete, we can go ahead and fill in the hoop and then we're going to create the hanging part and fill in the rest with the 620 centimeter length of cord. I like to bundle it up and pull about a meter out and then I'm just going to take one of my scrap cords that I cut off from the wall hanging before and just tie it in a knot around this bundle so it doesn't get all knotted and tangled up. This is just the easiest way that I've found to do it. So we're going to turn the wall hanging over like this and we're going to start on the bottom left like this and then that way we can end up with the hanging cord in the middle. So I'm just taking the end of my 620 centimeter length of cord and I'm just going to wrap it around the hoop and I'm just going to tie it in a double knot. Just like that. So now we're going to take this cord over the hoop like this and then we're going to pass it under the hoop and through this loop here and then just pull that to tighten it up against the double knot. Next we're going to take the cord underneath the hoop and it's going to come over the hoop and through this loop here. So we're essentially creating rows of lark's head knots but obviously we can't attach the lark's head knot in the normal way so this is how we're going to do it. So again, it goes over the hoop like this and then it comes underneath the hoop and through this loop. And then next we go underneath the hoop 
and then it comes over the hoop and through the loop. And then just make sure you're pulling that up against the knot to make it look nice and even and neat. So we're just going to continue this the whole way around the hoop until we get to the top so we can create the hanging string. So this is just a quick time lapse that I made for my Instagram. So go ahead and follow me over there at Lunacraft Online if you like things like this. I also have it linked in my description. I post a lot of these behind the scenes time lapse videos as well. So I'm just making sure that the textured part is sitting directly in the middle of the hoop. Sometimes it starts to slide over. Okay, so you can either have it smooth on the outside of the hoop like this, but what I like to do is twist it around so I have this nice sort of scalloped detail bit on the outside of the hoop. I think it really adds to the overall look of everything, but it's up to you and you can always spin it around if you don't like it. So now we can just determine how long we want the hanging string to be. And then once you're happy with that length, we can go ahead and start on the other side. So for this, I'm attaching it in the exact same way. So I'm just flipping the wall hanging over and then I'm doing the exact same lark's head knot method whilst making sure that I hold the string in place. So the hanging cord is the exact length that I would like it. And then I'm just checking that from the front to make sure. And now we can just continue going the whole way around this other half of the hoop like so. And now it's time to secure this cord in place and then do the finishing touches. So like at the start, I'm just going to tie this in a double knot. So I'm just going around the hoop and then bring in the cord through the loop. And I'm just going to do that twice to secure it in place. If you wanted extra security, you could always dab this with a bit of fabric glue, but I don't find it that necessary for this. And then I'm just snipping off the excess and putting that in my scrap cord pile, obviously. So now the wall hanging is nearly complete and I'm just going to take my comb and I'm just going to brush out all of the cords. I like to comb out all of the cords so they go all nice and fluffy, but it's entirely up to you. You could leave some cords as normal or brush some out. And then I'm just going through and pulling any of the cords that have loosened a bit and making sure they're nice and tight. Now that everything is combed through and it's looking extra fluffy, I'm just going to take my scissors and this is entirely optional as well. I'm just going to cut off a few of the bits that I feel like need to be shorter. So I'm just taking my time. It's obviously easier to cut off a little at a time rather than too much and regret it. And then I'm also turning the wool hanger over and combing out the bits of cord at the bottom and then I'm just going to trim them to be a lot shorter. Now the wool hanging is complete and it's exactly how I like it and everything is super textured and fluffy. Now it's just time to hang it up and enjoy it. So I really hope you like this wall hanging tutorial. It's a bit different for me to include a hoop in my wall hangings, but I really want to push myself a bit and get out of my comfort zone. And I also really wanted to create another scrap cord project. So I'll have my playlist of scrap cord projects linked somewhere and also my wall hangings if you want to check them out. And if you do recreate this, please be sure to tag me on Instagram at Lunacraft Online because I'd really love to see it and share it. So I hope you enjoy this and if you do make this with any other colours or random colour combinations I'd really really love to see it as well. I'm so interested to see what scrap cords you have or what colours you would use. And on these close up shots you can kind of see the gold flecks poking through. I really like that added touch and especially when light shines on them they really stand out and look really gorgeous. And if you could subscribe, like or comment, that would really help me out and make my day and I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.